Hello and welcome to series of tutorials dedicated to Composition Tool. Under each tutorial you will find Time Map, which will help you navigate fast to a certain topic. Topics are organized from the basic to more advanced, so it is advised to go through them in order of playlist. If you find something unclear or uncovered in following tutorials, please let me know on forum, there is a link below this video. Thank you and happy armor making! Ok, the installation process is quite simple. First in Steam choose the armor 3 and browse the workshop. Search button let's type in composition tool which sounds funny in some languages. Ok, now you can see two items to choose from the development branch and the stable branch. All new features and functions will first go to the development branch, which will frequently update. After some time of testing and sorting out issues, all these features from the development branch will be released to the stable branch. So basically development branch is ahead of the stable. I personally encourage you to go with the development branch because it have all the new functionality, it have basically up-to-date composition tool. So we simply subscribe to it and the downloading process will start. Let's give it a few seconds to download. Okay, now we go back to the library and start the Armor 3 launcher. Now we click Mods. And as you can see, the composition tool added to the list of available mods. That's pretty much it. We are done. Composition tool is installed. Alright, let's see what we can do with the composition tool. First of all, let's open the editor. Let's go to the airfield, because it's a nice place to show things. Okay. Well, first of all, we need to switch the composition tool on. And we can do that by selecting tools from the menu and a composition tool here. As you can see there is a error message pop up and it's okay, don't worry, ignore it because uh, it's empty project and there's uh, no libraries as of yet so just close it. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is the object browser. You can open the object browser by pressing shift space. As you can see, there are plenty of items you can choose from. Also, there are categories. All objects are separated into different categories. Let's see buildings, for example. Or maybe vegetation. You can choose category you want. Let's start with the buildings. Also, there is a searching functionality. You can search items inside this category, the category you selected. Let's say we need a shed. And as you can see, all objects that contain the string shed in their class names will be shown here. It is also possible to show all objects that are available inside object browser by selecting no grouping here and well, what it basically means all objects that are available in the um, composition tools object browser will be shown in the same list so we can actually search everywhere in each category a certain string so as you can see there are items from household and items from small items category and from a bunch of other places. So, how you actually 
build stuff here. Let's try with this building, maybe this one. Uh, when you have uh, the object you want to place, you simply click it with the left mouse button. And as you can see, it will be under your cursor. Let's find a place where we want it to be standing, for example here. And to place it, we simply left mouse button again. As you can see, object placed. You can see it in entities. You can rotate it. Set attributes or actually do whatever you want with it. Okay, imagine a situation when you would like to place multiply objects without need to select them each individual time. For example, with the walls. <coughs> Excuse me. You can hold control and press left mouse button. As you can see, multiply objects will be placed. In order to get rid of the object that you don't need and it's actually out there under the cursor, you can press the right mouse button and the object will go away. Okay, and there's um, one more thing that I want to show you. And um, we need uh, this one to show you. Okay, when you move objects around uh, inside Eden, the objects are aligned to the surface. And so the rotation values constantly changing in order to be aligned with the surface. And this behavior is that you not necessarily need all the time. For example, the, uh, imagine the situation when you want the objects to be placed a little bit differently, like upside down. Like this. Okay. And of course, if you try to move it around, it will change the rotation values of it in order to be aligned with the surface. And that, that's uh, that you not necessarily want to. So let's try to put it again. 90 degrees. Okay. And for this, there is a solution in Composition Tool. You can toggle the object rotation log. Now, when you move the object around, they will have the same rotation as they used to uh, before the grabbing. No matter what kind of terrain beneath the object or slope. And this will work for multiply objects. Let's rotate them in a certain weird way, like this. And um, note that toggle is on. Now those objects can be moved without losing their rotation values. Now, if you want the standard behavior to be back, just toggle it off. And as you can see, all, all objects will be allied to the surface. Okay, let's go with uh, something more advanced. The composition tool, as you can obviously guess from its name, uh, is the tool to make compositions. And um, I want to start off with that the compositions is not something new to the armor. It always was there. And uh, as well as in Eden, there's a compositions of uh, units and vehicles for each faction. And of course, there's uh, props compositions. You can actually drag and drop those compositions to your mission, no problem. Nice looking camps, maybe outposts. And uh, the composition tool allows you to create those compositions for your own. And um, the way uh, it's doing it, um, that's exactly what we are going to dive in. So, on the Composition Tool menu, let's open the Advanced tab. 
and uh, you can see the project here it's empty uh, well to in order to hold all this information about the compositions and uh, objects you placed there should be some storage right for those objects that was placed inside edit editor there is a mission SQM file and the mission SQM file will contain information about all the subjects, right? But for the composition tool and the compositions that are made with it, uh, there, are, there are another storage and it's called uh, project. And to be more precise, it's file that named ct underscore projects dot sqf this file needs to be in the mission uh, in the root folder of the mission in order to load the project and actually place all those buildings it might sound a bit uh, confusing but don't worry we will get to this and uh, see how it works okay uh, just to start with uh, let's create new project there's a button create new project here let's uh, create some rather generic name <laughs> and um, as you can see it automatically selected as the current project you can of course have as many projects as you want and you can always switch between them you can also delete the current project if you don't need it okay now we're almost ready to go you must remember that to start the composition tool you need to have at least one playable unit on the map not actually playable but player unit and if we st start uh, try to start the composition tool it says there's no unit hey and let's take this armor barrier Okay, there is a red circle around him. It, do it does mean that this is actually the player controlled. Okay, so now we can jump in into composition tool. Okay, first of all, let's see the GUI. As you can see, there's uh, information GUI. Uh, on the left side you can see the cursor information you can see the alignment mode build mode elements name category library size yes it might sounds uh, completely um, unclear what all this stuff doing but don't worry we will step by step go through all features of composition tool and to the end of those tutorials you probably will know how it works very well so don't worry okay so just to start off with uh, on the left side there's a information panel and to the right side there is uh, the context control information panel so what does it mean depending on in what kind of state the tool is in now the different controls will be shown to you so basically uh, you will have an idea what you can do with this certain tool you have at the moment in any given time just to show what I mean I'll switch to select tool and as you can see the controls to the right they changed so you always uh, can have a reference to what you can actually do in this or another state by pressing F2 you can cy cycle between the uh, GUI modes let's try uh, now as you can see there is a uh, still info panel to the left and there is a basic control to the right uh, now this panel uh, on the right it have uh, all the controls available to you uh, no matter what kind of uh, tool you have currently in hand 
So those are basic controls. You can see there is a camera movement, camera height, uh, camera speed and uh, options like that. So let's try press F2 again. As you can see it's only info to the left. And again you see no GUI whatsoever. And F2 again and we are back to the start. Let's see how camera control works. You move around with WASD and you change height with Q and E. You orient the camera with your mouse. You can change speed with the mouse wheel. It can be quite fast and quite slow. In order to navigate interiors with the high precision. Also, it is possible to have a cursor on your screen if you like it and if you get used to it more. By pressing caps lock, you enter the cursor mode. And uh, in this mode, you can also move around with WASD, change speed with mouse wheel, change height with QE. And in order to move around the camera, or rotate it, you need to hold the right mouse button. 